Hey folks, this is Dr. Emily Scherning with American Resiliency. I'm excited to share this story with you. This is about a scientist who's exploring deep in the caverns of Missouri to uncover a doomsday clock, providing unifying evidence for thousand year cycles of chaos in the North American climate. So like basically this is caves of doom story. I'm really, it's caves of doom. Okay, I'm gonna calm down. So I recently gave a seminar at the University of Iowa. I had the opportunity to talk with a lot of faculty. I, of course, wanted to speak with Professor Durrell. This guy, he's hardcore. His research interest is uncovering the mysteries of Earth's climate history. He's done a lot of work going way back, even beyond human origins, to examine how Earth's climate has changed over geologic time. You probably know we have evidence that there have been times in our planet's history when it's way warmer, with palm trees growing in what is now Antarctica, and we know it's been way colder. There used to be glaciers overlaying a lot of North America in human history during what we call the Ice Age. So I had lots of smart ideas for what I was going to ask him around rates of change. Like, could he compare the rate of change we're experiencing now in Earth's climate systems to rates of change in similar climate transitions that are being explored in Earth's past? But I went to his office and he directs me immediately to check out some strange objects because he's got a story to tell me. So that's exciting. So he shows me these. Let's check them out. These are stalagmites. As you, any of you who know caves, these are the formations that come out of the ground in a cave as opposed to the stalactites. They hold on tight to the ceiling, right, fellow cave fans? These stalagmites are from a cave that this professor's team explores in Missouri. It's a big cave system, several kilometers in size. You can see easily right to the naked eye, there are patterns of banding on this stalagmite dark bands occurring pretty regularly. I mean, you can see the pattern. If you know anything about caves, you know that these formations grow slowly over hundreds of years. So what does this pattern mean? This pattern of dark and light occurring over hundreds of years. Professor Doral was happy to tell me more about this. So what's going on with these patterns? The stalagmites are deep in the cave. The dark bands, which he and his team have done chemical analysis on them, the dark bands contain more sediment, more mud and stuff than these broader, lighter parts of the bands. Where they're dark, the cave has flooded and all the schmutz and stuff in the cave has gotten stirred up. This flooding doesn't happen when it rains normally. The, the regular rain, the cave doesn't take on a lot of water. This phenomena, the flooding that would produce banding, only happens if it pours. The professor and his team have explored this cave really carefully. The mouths of the cave only take in water when it rains enough to cause a flood, and then the whole cave system floods. So every dark band here, that's a sign of torrential rain. Decades of deluges slowly laying down bands of darkness in the cave. From counting the bands and doing isotope analysis, which, you know, lets us read a molecular clock, right? The professor's team has figured out how often these cycles of flooding occur. The dating methods that he used are cool. If you see these circular samples, that's where they're studying these stalagmites using carbon data. There's increasing criticism of carbon dating techniques, though. So they're like, let's do a uranium thorium series. And these linear niches, that's what they're sampling for, is uranium decay. You'll notice that most of those samples are being taken in the lighter bands, the ones with less of the dark sediment. That's because you can avoid some challenges with molecular replacement of the uranium if you date more from the time where the cave stays fairly dry. So with that uranium thorium technique and the careful sampling, his team built up a clock going back about 7,000 years. So if you're a nerd like me, you're going to love this. The next thing that he showed me was his certainty figures, where we're looking at plus or minus like 50 years of dating on this particular stalagmite, this particular clock. But he's got it tied to what he considers a better index specimen, which is anchored way deeper in time. When he's cross-aligned the data, he's thinking it's got about plus or minus a 10-year bead on these deluge cycle. It looks like they come about 800 to 1,000 years, pretty regularly. Some of them a little closer together than others, about 1,000 years. When I heard those numbers, my ears perked up because this is not the only place I've heard of mounting evidence for 1,000-year cycles of climate chaos in North America. 1,000-year cycles that aren't entirely regular, that can run a little short. I've heard indigenous oral traditions about these cycles in the Southwest where peoples have lived for a long time. The Hopi have been warning us that we're heading for a big shakeup for quite a while. If we look 
back in time about a thousand years. Look from year 800 to year 1500, peaking at about 1200. We have quite a bit of evidence regarding North America's last precipitation cycle, this last deluge cycle that we see recorded in the cave. So here on the channel, we talk a lot about the current drought pattern in the Southwest and the drought is likely to continue and increase in the Southwest based not just on climate data, but based on historical trends of drought. You might not know that the drought trend in the Southwest has completely kicked people out of the region before. The Four Corners region of the Southwest, it used to be the most densely populated part of North America. Highly organized communities, culturally complex, the great drought peaking in 1200 collapsed those communities, just like will happen with our upcoming climate changes. There were some people in the area who like got really resilient, they got really tough, they stayed in place. There were some people who died and there were some people who left, who went to greener pastures. So when I saw this banding on these stalagmites showing deluge in Missouri at about the same time as the last pulse of that Southwest mega drought, to say I got real interested would be a polite understatement. So this info, it really jives with the legends I've heard, the old stories that when the change time comes, you know, when the medicine wheel turns, the types of events that predominate are different in different places. When you come to this time of turning, this is the old stories, you can get destruction by drought, by flood, by earthquake, by fire, by ice. Like there's a range of hazards in the cycle of chaos. It's, it's interesting to hear about and to see it correlated with this scientific evidence. And this professor, he told me he's heard more evidence related to these cycles from a colleague of his who works on the sand hills in Nebraska. So when Professor Durrell shared this deluge data with his colleague who looks at geologic evidence for when the sand dunes have been exposed and when they've been covered, that line of evidence falls on the same time scale, the same cycle of extremes hitting along the same time scale where the dunes become bare and the sand moves, indicating serious drought there, right? Right along the same times as we see Missouri flood. Nebraska and Missouri, for those who are um, not too familiar with the geography of the Midwest, they're pretty close to each other. So these are really intense precipitation climbs being observed in this data. This is all pretty wild, right? There's a lot of patterns coming together. The dunes for the last mega drought in the Southwest, there's a lot of tree ring evidence, and we've got these lines of earth preserved in the caves. But there's more. Professor Durrell told me, if you look at the intensity of these bands he's studying and his data from the caves, the cycles occur regularly in time, but they're not always at the same intensity. The cycles are getting more and more intense over the last 7,000 years. So there are people who don't get invested in climate change, right? They explain the changes we're experiencing now as part of natural cycles. These bodies of scientific evidence we're covering today are about natural cycles, right? Humans were not burning tons of fossil fuel in 1200 AD. The availability of overnight shipping in 1200 AD was very low. You know, in North America, sure, there was a good sized population. There were many sophisticated societies, many with better sanitation and nutrition that could be found in Europe at the time. But we're not talking about the same kind of carbon footprint that we think about when we consider today's problems. I guess my message here is twofold. One, people who talk about natural cycles that is an explanation for climate change, I would argue the evidence suggests there is more to the story, but they're not wrong, right? Two, when we talk about these natural cycles, we shouldn't think that means they're mild and maybe they don't do anything like natural laundry detergent. The natural climate cycles of North America, well before the Industrial Revolution in the 1800s, were already completely capable of collapsing the most sophisticated human societies of the time period. North America, the continent with the best climate outlook in the global picture, with a better biodiversity outlook than almost any place on the planet. And that's thanks to the conservation work we've done, you know, thanks to the traditions, the love of the earth we haven't completely abandoned. We can know North America has a history. This land shakes off complex human societies like a dog coming out of the bath. According to the geological record written in the caves, these natural cycles were already growing more intense pretty steady increase in intensity over the last 7,000 years. 
Climate scientists could say, instead of highlighting the uniqueness of our current climate situation, they could say, we appear to have supercharged a natural phenomena, a natural cycle phenomena that was already getting worse. So what's the takeaway here? Should we freak out because the cave say doom is coming? Is this a drums in the deep situation? Oh, it's tempting. It's a tempting takeaway, potentially fun, but it's really not where I'm going with this. I would like you to take away from this that if you talk with people about climate and you encounter this natural cycles argument, this it's presented as a counter explanation in our culture, right? You shouldn't write them off. You should engage with them because they do have an important piece of the story. And whether you want to believe that we caused this problem or not, regardless of that, regardless of if it's our fault, the changes that are coming are a problem we need to deal with. It's our problem now. And building resilience is a place where we should be able to come together. All the signs are on the table. This is the time to get ready. The other takeaway that I think is important from this story is that we have knowledge here, not just of cataclysm, but of survival, of cultural resilience. The deep ancestral knowledge of North America, of living with the land, is knowledge that made it through the last period of cataclysm. People made it through. People survived the last turn. And one thing that I know for sure is that they didn't do that by freaking out or giving up. Those things did not get them through. People in North America have made it through some very rough times before, to put it extremely mildly. We should tune in. We should learn what we can because you never know what you're going to need or who would benefit potentially from what you can pass on. Everything ripples out in ways you never expect. Professor Durrell, he's seeking funding to continue his explorations. If he's successful, he'll sample stalagmites from various depths in the cave, which I think is very smart. By sampling from various depths, he'll be able to make a clock that doesn't just say, did it flood or not? Looking back in time, he'll also be able to tell us how deep the floods were. That sounds like the kind of practical information we could use so that we could get an idea of what sort of flood levels we're actually going to be dealing with in Missouri as we enter this time of turning. So send him some good vibes with these recent NSF grants. I'm going to be following up on his story basically as much as he'll let me, if we're lucky. In a couple of months, I'm going to try and get him to explain what we know about the times in Earth's history before when the oceans had periods of rapid change. Very relevant to today, right? I, it seems very relevant to my concerns. I wish you all the best. I hope that you've enjoyed this story and I'll see you again soon. Let's get ready. Hey folks, I wanna take a minute and promote our community chat coming up this Sunday, November 19th at 2 p.m. Central. Come and hang out with me. We're gonna look through the NCA5 and start digging through our new national updated climate projections. Bring a question, bring a figure you want to explore. Let's get into it. I wanted to tell you Caves of Doom story because I've been working on it while we wait for the NCA5 to come out. Now it's out. I got to get focused on that, right? So I'll be working on that. And I want to thank everyone who's supporting the project. I'm very excited that we've gotten to this point where we're going to be able to update every state level outlook. And it's thanks to the support of viewers like you. Check this out. I had to split up the donation slides again because people are giving so much to help me keep going. Thank you so much to everyone who gives. If you want to contribute to the project, donating through PayPal, you can make sure that I get like 95% of your donation that same day. That is the most useful for me continuing to feed my children beans and other such, uh, you know, essential functions of life. Everyone who gives, Everyone who volunteers, I appreciate you so much. And I hope that I can continue to earn your support. I hope that I can continue to give you information that is helpful and that is useful to you. Talk to you all soon. Let's get ready together. Bye.